Hello, welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to The Boring Company. Very important episode today. I want to explore the importance of cost and why The Boring Company needs to drive down costs of its tunnels. The most important factor is The Boring Company is going to be building many, many miles of tunnels potentially every year and thus every single dollar they can save on those tunnels is going to help their bottom line, it's going to help them expand quicker, it's also going to allow them to pay their employees more money. So, why is cost important? Let's have a chat about this. So what is the current cost per mile? So if I wanted to build one mile of tunnel in Las Vegas, for example, I know that it costs around $7.7 .7 million per mile. Just a quick note, that does not include ventilation shafts, that does not include the road deck, that does not include the launch pit, uh, doesn't include any kind of uh, safety systems inside the tunnel. That is the pure construction cost of the actual tunnel uh, element constructed from the TBM. That is the element that's going to be the focus of today's talk, that is where the boring company, if they work hard, if they analyze all these potential areas of saving and focus on them, they can make considerable saving and drive that 7.7 .7 million per mile down quite considerably. Potentially well over 30%. So 10 miles, 77 million, we've got 50 miles there and 100 miles is 770 million dollars. That is, that is similar to what is going to be built, built in Las Vegas, probably more. A large system in Las Vegas will be over 100 miles. Can remember that a lot of these tunnels are dual bore tunnels. So if you've got 50 miles of tunnel that's dual bore, that's going to be 100 miles. So I suspect somewhere like Las Vegas, it could be closer to 200 miles. In a city like Houston, maybe, or Dallas. It could be over 400 miles, somewhere like Manchester, where I'm from. Potentially, again, maybe 400, 300 miles, something like that. So if you look at the costs to actually build the tunnels, you're looking at monumental figures like this. So every percentage you can get it down is a bonus for the Boeing company and its future prospects. The Boeing company needs to drastically cut costs to enable longer tunnels. Spoil and muck recycling. As you know, this is a big part of the cost of tunneling, is that you're essentially creating a void in the ground and all that material that you are pulling out, you then need to do something with it. The likely answer is that you're gonna take that to landfill or dispose of it near to where you're excavating the tunnel. If you're lucky, if you're very lucky, you might be able to dump it to near the uh, the entrance to your tunnel. But most of the time, if you're working in a dense urban area, you're gonna have to take that muck to landfill. You're gonna have to move it via truck or via train or some other means and uh, maybe conveyor belts. So that is a very expensive process. The Bone Company knows how to deal with this. In future projects, they will construct bricks and blocks using special machinery that compresses the earth into these bricks and blocks, and then they will sell that for 10 cents per brick. Potentially, they could do maybe, let's say they did 30 bricks for $2, some kind of offer like that. That would be a real money earner for the Boeing company, and it would save them a ton of money in uh, disposal costs. It could also use in aggregate for concrete, so it could be used in the concrete segments. If you've got uh, suitable strata, it could also be used in uh, uh, standard concrete, uh, poured uh, in situ for foundations maybe, for um, concrete slabs, pad foundations, uh, beams and columns, that sort of thing, if, if it was necessary. Uh, also, and this is quite a good use case, fill material for roads and foundations. So in and around your foundations before you pour a slab, you'll need some MLT or hardcore. 
If we were able to use the boring bricks and blocks, we're looking at around a 20% cost saving uh, for aggregate, for the uh, fill material, maybe slightly less, 18 to 15%. So there's big savings there. Potentially, that is a saving of $1.54 million per mile. So remember, per mile. So that is a big saving when you're boring quite a big system of, you know, 10, 20, 30, maybe even 40 miles. Okay, concrete segment optimization. This is an interesting area. I think it needs a good look at, really does. So the segments that the boring company are using in Las Vegas are very thick. It even surprised me when I found out that they were over 300 millimeters in depth. That's very thick. Now, I know as an example that uh, in the underground, I believe it was Madrid or Barcelona, they were looking at using around 220, 230. They eventually ended up using around 260, but there's definitely an opportunity with the right design to use around a 250 mil deep concrete segment. You can do that by adding extra reinforcements and thus reducing the amount of concrete in there and producing a more dense, compact segment. And that will save you a ton of money. Less concrete and more rebar, not necessarily steel. There might be an opportunity for using a, a material that is lighter but stronger than steel in the concrete segments if it can be supplied at the right price. And thus, if you can make the segments uh, thinner, you can reduce the uh, diameter of the cutter head. Therefore, you're excavating less material and you're obviously uh, conserving energy because you're having to move a lighter cutter head. Segment shape optimization. Most segments are your standard, if you can see here at the uh, top right hand corner, are rectangular segments, very plain. Uh, you, you see some of these voids here uh, for bolting the segments together. Is the potential for totally redesigning segments, maybe using hexagonal segments, maybe uh, introducing a design where we've got open areas on the internal face of the segment. There's opportunities there to further optimize the design to actually make it stronger, but also lighter. That's the key there. You increase the strength of the segment, but you also make it, you know, 10, 15% lighter. Thus, that is gonna save you a ton of money because you're using a lot less concrete. A really important, this is probably the most important area. I should have put this right at the beginning. The Boeing company should locally manufacture segments. It should manufacture its own segments. It should have its own production line. It should use its own aggregate. It should use, uh, you know, its own people who are manufacturing them. The, the idea of uh, subcontracting that operation out to another person who's then going to add 10 to 15% uh, for his, uh, his profit margin, that, that's a, a bad idea. What they want to do is manufacture them locally. They could manufacture them, you know, six months in advance, and have them out, out in the desert somewhere, just waiting to be used. You don't, you, you need to think outside the box. You need to look at how you can cut the costs down. As an opportunity, this is a big opportunity. I think if you did all four of those things above, especially number one and number four, you're definitely looking in and around 12%. That's quite pessimistic. I think even if you're being uh, reasonably optimistic, it might even be 15%. But for this uh, analysis, we're going to go for 12%. So that would equate to nearly a million dollars, $924,000. Okay, this is fairly obvious, but I'm going to include it anyway. The key way to reduce costs, and trust me, I've done this on a few jobs. I've managed a ton of jobs where you're getting towards the end of the contract and you're looking at the costings and you're thinking, Jesus Christ, we need to cut outgoings. And you can successfully do that by analyzing all areas of the business and really looking at really hammering costs down. And this should be reasonably easy to do for the boring company from day one. So, electrical power consumption. The Boeing company has an opportunity to source its electricity 
from renewable um, sources, store it, and then use it later on. They would need one hell of a, a battery pack, but I'm presuming Tesla could supply that. And also that is much more efficient because you're supplying it directly to the TBM rather than it going through the grid and all the inefficiencies that you have there. Also, there may be opportunities to make the TBM more efficient at using uh, power. That's a job for a qualified electrical engineer with experience in this field. I'm presuming the Boeing company will be able to find someone who can do that. Maintenance costs. The big, or it, it's a reasonably big out. It's not a huge outgoing, but it's a big outgoing is maintenance costs. Constantly, constantly, the machines having to be stopped. Uh, maintenance. There's lots and lots of moving parts in a TBM. It's, it's not far off. Uh, well, it's a lot less than an internal combustion engine, but you've still got many, many moving parts. Um, things are constantly uh, breaking or requiring maintenance to keep them going at the uh, the specification that they're required for the job. So, one of the big ones is the, the, the cutter discs. The cutter discs are constantly having to be replaced, uh, potentially every month, maybe more often, depends on the ground. If you could produce um, a cutter disc that is much uh, much stronger than the current ones, that's a big ask. I, I, you know, I'm, not, I'm not lying to you here, guys. It's a big ask to do that, but if you're able to do a bit of material science and figure out something that's uh, much tougher, stronger, and robust, then you could reduce those maintenance cycles to every two to three months. And obviously there's other items. So totally redesigning the machine and building it in a way that, that focuses on reducing maintenance costs is going to help you in the long term reduce uh, long term reducing outgoings. Three, manpower costs. So at the moment, there's a reasonably big team of people that are helping manage the TBM, helping run the TBM. Usually you've got someone in there, you've got someone assembling the concrete segments, you've got someone uh, you know, walking around, ensuring that the machine is working as per it should be. Um, a lot of that can be eliminated. The, the TBM can be, become mostly autonomous. Uh, this is long term, by the way. It's not. We're not talking about next year or the year after. This is really the long term goal. And um, a lot of these things can be monitored from the surface. You might only need one or two people actually inside the TBM at any one time. Um, Supplying and removing spoil, so supplying materials and removing spoil can be done autonomously using the autonomous uh, trucks, using the rubber wheels. So again, cutting manpower costs and you're going to reduce the outgoings. Shorter construction program obviously helps big time. Um, if you ever worked on a job, a lot what you soon realise is that a lot of the uh, equipment and um, tools that you have on site are rented. So you're renting it for a period of time from a supplier and then they're charging you every month. Um, every uh, every week that you have those tools on site, every day, uh, adds to your costs. So if you can shorten the construction program from 18 months to 12 months, you know, you've just saved yourself six months worth of uh, expenses there. So it makes sense that if we've got a faster machine, we're going to make savings uh, in terms of uh, hiring and acquiring equipment. So the overall opportunity here is around 6.5% by my making. Uh, that would be equivalent to about half a million dollars. So not to be sniffed at, and that's half a million dollars per mile. So that's quite a lot, quite a lot indeed. So potentially, if you implemented all the things that uh, we've talked about today, that could potentially equate to $4.736 million per mile. That is incredible. And I think even that could be further undercut by more efficiency gains with the machine and the processes. So you're looking at around 4.7, maybe $4.6 million per mile. That's a big improvement on the 7.7 .7 million. So that would be incredible. The Boeing company has mentioned quite a lot of these things on their website. They're working towards that and we're going to see the cost reductions in other projects that they undertake in California, in Washington and in other places. Okay, great guys. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today on this episode. 
really great as always to see you okay so i just wanted to uh thank everyone for watching please like and subscribe join me on discord twitter and instagram all the links are down below uh yeah and if you want to write in the comments uh, some feedback tell me about cost optimization which areas you think are important which areas you think are not important and anything that i've missed also, a big, big thank to all my Patreons. Ashley, Mike, David, Chris, Jim, Curtis, Milton, Nathan. Thank you so much for your continued support. You continue to make you know, this channel move along very smoothly with your constant donations. Thank you so much. So yeah, please like and subscribe. Thank you for commenting. And obviously, hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much, everyone. And remember, don't be boring. We'll see you on the next one.